Well, the Oklahoma Department of Human Services has made progress in meeting the goals set out in the Pinnacle Plan, a court-ordered settlement to improve conditions for children in foster care. But an assessment of the foster program shows the state is still falling short when it comes to recruiting and retaining foster families to address the needs of Oklahoma's most vulnerable citizens. Jerry Askins understands the challenges facing Oklahoma as it works to improve the lot of children in foster care. As the governor's special advisor for implementation of the Pinnacle Plan, Askins says one of the Department of Human Services top priorities is recruiting and retaining foster families to provide homes for the more than 10,000 children in state custody. We know that we need to recruit more families, but we also need to retain the families that have um, been with us in the past. And so we're working really hard to recruit more families and then provide services and support so that they'll stay with us. Under the settlement agreement, a panel of outside experts called co-neutrals is required to assess the state's progress in meeting the Pinnacle Plan's objectives. A report released last spring concluded DHS has made a good faith effort in some areas, but expressed concern that DHS had not developed the overall capacity to recruit the number of foster homes sufficient to meet the needs of children and youth in its care. The report shows the state had a net gain of 232 foster homes from July of 2014 to January of 2015, but noted of the 2,139 homes reported open on January 1st, 604 were unused. Of that number, 152 had been vacant for six months and 41 had been vacant for over a year. In addition, the study pointed to the fact that while DHS had a consistent waiting list of 160 to 180 children needing special therapeutic care, the agency was reporting 185 beds are available but unused. Lana Freeman is the president of Foster Care and Adoptive Association of Oklahoma. Oklahoma, unfortunately, uh, per capita, is one of the largest in the nation for children that need foster care placements. Legislation passed last year is expected to help in the recruitment and retention of foster families. State Representative Pat Ownby was part of a group of lawmakers who helped craft Senate Bill 1793. The whole point of 1793 was to say, if you're a foster parent and you complain to DHS, some are feeling like they're being retaliated against, and frankly, some of them were. And so what this does is this puts that really in a completely different sphere. The bill, which took effect last November, mandated a new grievance and complaint process for foster parents and established an online complaint system. Freeman believes that change will help to retain foster families. These are children that you bond with and that you love and you want to do the best that you can to advocate for them and support them. And when you're afraid that they can come and take them if you say anything, then a lot of times they wouldn't. So what people did is they gave up. They got to the point where they said, when this child leaves, I'm done. Another issue affecting foster parent recruitment is money or the lack of it. Budget shortfalls have limited funds available to increase reimbursement rates for foster families. Several years ago, the uh, Children's Rights and uh, the National Foster Parents Association put together a, uh, a paper on, uh, it's called the MARC, on where Oklahoma and other states rate against each other as far as the reimbursement, and we fell so woefully short. According to the report Hitting the Mark, which estimates the cost to raise a foster child, the minimum adequate rate for children between the ages of 6 and 12 is $639 a month. Oklahoma's reimbursement rates rose from $527.40 per month in fiscal year 2015 to $583.50 in FY 2016, still well short of the minimum adequate rate. We know it's, it never is going to cover the entire cost, and so I believe that the requirements to be a foster family, you still have to show your monetary, um, your financial stability to be able to care for a child. Freeman has been a foster parent for more than 30 years and knows all too well how difficult it can be financially. When my husband and I started, um, we had to add on a room. We had to get a van because we couldn't transport the children without the van. And so, of course, electricity, all of these things went up. And so you're talking about lots and lots of money. The financial burden on foster families also increased this year when budget cuts forced DHS to end a key voucher program.
Because of the budget situations that we are in as it relates to our traditional foster families, knowing that there was going to be an increase in the um, reimbursement rates for our foster families, the decision was made, a difficult decision was made to um, eliminate the, the month, the clothing allowance. Freeman says clothing vouchers are often critical for children newly placed in a foster home. They usually come with the shirt on their back. I've had babies come that just had a dirty diaper. That's it. Lawmakers earmarked $15.9 million this year to fund the Pinnacle Plan. But even with that increase, the Department of Human Services total budget is facing a $45.2 million shortfall. With talk of a possible billion dollar budget hole in next year's state budget, Freeman is worried about the likelihood of more cuts. Because we can't recruit if we, you know, if we keep cutting, Families can't take from their families to take care of the, these children. They already are. And if you cut more, then some of them just simply cannot do it, and that breaks my heart.